So now it's time for power where Walker. Ah, sorry. Oh. I, so Powell is a release engineer at Samsung on the Tizen platform, which is a mobile phone. And Pavel will talk about testing remote embedded device. Mike is yours. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, as I was introduced, uh, I work uh, at uh, Samsung R&D Institute Poland, and I'm currently involved in uh, Tizen release engineering team. Uh, that's why we uh, have to automate as much as possible in order to stay efficient with our day-to-day -day activities. That's also why we came up with uh, the design for unification uh, for testing automation on embedded devices, which we call MaxPy. And that's what I would like to share with you today. Let me start with a short introduction uh, to what I will be actually talking about. Then I will summarize uh, previous efforts uh, in this matter. Uh, I will uh, depict our idea for testing automation on embedded devices. Then I'll go through the hardware that we made, uh, software, accompanying software as well. Uh, and I would like to share with you our future plans for uh, the work that is still, uh, that we still have to do. I will summarize it with a short uh, conclusion, and then we'll have uh, a Q&A session. So what uh, actually, what do I actually do? Uh, I work with Tizen, which is a GNU Linux distribution for embedded devices. It is based on standard components like uh, GNU Tools Collection, uh, Linux kernel, obviously, Wayland uh, Server, uh, Wayland Display Server, and Enlightenment Foundation libraries. Uh, or EFL in short, as the main graphics library. And Tizen is mainly used on uh, consumer um, devices like mobile phones, wearables as well, uh, but also TVs, uh, fridges, as in Family Hub, and since May 2017 with Tizen 4.0 Milestone 1 on IoT devices as well. But uh, Tizen on those devices is... Uh, is a product one uh, great Tizen. Uh, what I do is uh, work on platform, which is being developed by contributors or all, all over uh, the world with R&D centers uh, in India, USA, uh, South Korea, and Poland as well. That's why we need to develop uh, our platform continuously uh, with uh, daily snapshots of uh, merged software. But the fact that we release often in order to fail early uh, does not mean that we take uh, the QA stage lightly. Uh, because of uh, we have to take care of devices for developers all over the world, we always check uh, the um, software that we are to publish on actual devices before uh, the images are uh, published for everyone to use. And even though uh, Packages are equipped with internal tests, and we run them on, on a daily basis. They are not enough, and uh, because we want to, uh, we want no unexpected behavior of uh, developers' devices. That's why we make sure that uh, there is no. And how does it look like? Uh, well, uh, we monitor uh, pre-releases of the software download them, uh, flash onto the uh, target devices, then run test batteries, gather results, and uh, investigate if there were any, uh, any failures or uh, other indicators that the software should be uh, stopped from being published. But in order to do that, uh, it is much easier not to just uh, have all of those devices, various devices, mobiles, wearables, uh, or even fridges right on the desk of release engineers, it is much easier to have them uh, being accessible uh, remotely. It is especially important for the devices that uh, are not published yet, that they uh, really need uh, to be stored in a secure manner. But it also gives us uh, the ability to um, uh, to have much less effort on the developer's side as for the maintenance of the devices and 
uh, all of them can be much better utilized when they are shared, when they are uh, never pointlessly uh, stored in uh, some developer's locker once uh, he or she goes uh, back home. That's why we came up with uh, this device. Mm, uh, it's MaxPy, and it uh, needs only two interfaces, two connections, in order to be uh, accessible remotely, which are, which are power supply, of course, and the Ethernet for network connection. Uh, once connected to the target device, such as uh, Raspberry Pi 3, uh, right here, it is already uh, ready to use. And it's, uh, as you might suspect, uh, pretty, easily to, pretty easy to scale, because it needs only two interfaces. So scaling up is as easy as uh, connecting uh, further MaxPies with target devices to the network switch. And it unifies uh, the access to the boards. So it's uh, easy for Raspberry Pis or other single board computers such as Odroid or even uh, other types of target devices like mobile phones. Uh, and we will get back to the MaxPies in a minute. But before, let me summarize real quick why did we uh, came up with this design and uh, what else can be used for uh, automated testing. From software point of view, uh, one of the most popular uh, applications for that use is uh, LAVA, which stands for Linaro Automated Validation Architecture and is being developed by the company Linaro. Uh, it is an automation, uh, automation system for uh, operating system deployments and supports both uh, virtual and physical devices and allows uh, running boot, bootloader uh, and system level tests as well, although uh, some additional hardware might be necessary uh, for them to work properly. Uh, however, uh, it, uh, what, uh, what was a problem for us uh, was uh, being able to run uh, interactive sessions on uh, boards that were connected to the LAVA server. Uh, LAVA has an uh, internal mechanism for uh, interactive sessions, uh, which is called hacking sessions, uh, but it did not work for our use cases, which involved modification of bootloader uh, or rerunning or restarting uh, device over and over again. Uh, for us, it was uh, to test uh, recovery mechanism of uh, Tizen platform. Uh, one, uh, however, it is widely used uh, at Linaro, of course, uh, for automotive-grade Linux uh, test lab uh, system and for other popular uh, GNU Linux distributions uh, such as um, Debian uh, or Yocto as well. Uh, I believe the most popular uh, use case is kernel CI with already 3.5 million successful boots and counting. And that's uh, not the only uh, effort from Linaro to um, automate testing on embedded devices. Uh, in 2013, they also came up with uh, LMPs, which are boards uh, for both testing hot plugin devices and checking how the software on embedded device react to hot plugging, uh, for example, uh, SATA device or uh, USB device, but also they were able to give uh, much better control uh, to the administrator of testing laboratory uh, over the device under test, or DAT for short. Uh, but uh, uh, it, was, uh, on, it, it is currently on hold, and lessons learned uh, from uh, use of LMPs, especially uh, of uh, microSD card demultiplexer, were published in the link down below. Uh, however, we also gave an attempt at creating microSD card demultiplexer, uh, or SDMAX for short, and we've been using it since 2016. Uh, this board uh, only uh, gives you the ability to share access to the microSD card between device under tests, or DAT for short, and test server uh, or TS. Um, it also allows to uh, control uh, the power supply to the uh, target device, and that's basically it. It does not know anything else about, uh, about uh, target device, uh, and uh, it only gives you this to 
uh, small features. However, it was uh, pretty useful for us, and not only for us, uh, Qt company and also Ableton, which you might have heard of, uh, were able to recreate uh, this uh, setup because we thought it would be uh, great to share it with others. And we published all these schematics uh, and uh, software and uh, other related materials uh, in the Git repository and use only open source software for that so that everyone can use it. Uh, or even uh, fork it, like uh, Resin IO, uh, who uh, thought that it would be uh, great to have some indicators on board uh, and uh, created uh, AutoHUD board on the basis of uh, our SDMOX. Uh, unfortunately, we ran into some issues using uh, SDMOXs. Uh, and uh, the main issue that we got was the uh, uh, instability of the connection uh, on the USB between the SDMAX and test server. Uh, every three to six months, uh, the test server uh, was unable to enumerate uh, another uh, devices on the uh, USB uh, hubs, and that the uh, 71 errors are uh, protocol errors, which you can see, uh, which uh, uh, had to, uh, which led to uh, downtimes of our testing laboratory, which we um, were not all right with. That's why we took a step back, uh, went back to uh, drawing board, and uh, decided to bring a new idea to the table. Uh, we already knew what was uh, working right. We also knew what uh, wasn't. So, uh, and that's why we decided that we will keep uh, only replaceable uh, medias, uh, which were off uh, the quickest in testing laboratory. So we uh, still are using microSD cards for uh, the deployments of our operating uh, system images. But we decided that uh, there shouldn't be a situation where a failure of a single device causes a failure of the next ones. So uh, we uh, try not to uh, introduce any uh, SPOF, uh, SPOF onto the uh, setup. And we also knew that there, is, uh, there has to be no involvement of the USB connections on the test server uh, side. We also wanted uh, minimum external connections uh, between the device under target or the board that controls it uh, and uh, outside world and wanted to have it in a unified way. Uh, with the mm, feedback we got from Resin.io, uh, we decided that uh, easy setup and maintenance uh, would be a great plus. And since we were back at the drawing board, uh, we uh, thought that maybe a whole user interface would be helpful. And with increasing demand for uh, measuring and lowering, of course, uh, power consumption, we decided that it could be useful as well as uh, having uh, and being able to write uh, some EDID information to HDMI. It's pretty useful for the uh, devices that you would like to, um, um, for them to think that they have display connected even though they don't. Uh, that's why uh, we uh, came up with this design, but I think it would be easier to describe it uh, on the schematics. We started with the gold uh, old uh, SD Max, uh, which, uh, or, uh, which has already a uh, simple UI added uh, to the uh, board itself. And of course, the power control uh, and uh, power consumption measurement on board as well. Everything is uh, under control of, uh, by the NanoPi Neo board, which is a simple uh, single board computer, uh, ARM7 based, ARMv7, and of course a microcontroller for low level uh, features of the board itself. <coughs> With the MaxPi board, we are able to uh, demultiplex uh, the connection of microSD card between uh, DAT and TS. We are also able to uh, switch power supply, and that's what uh, SD Max already gave us. Uh, we are also able to uh, switch uh, dynamically uh, jumpers on the uh, DAT, which is pretty useful if your device uh, has some buttons 
which uh, are required to be pressed in order for that to, um, to boot up or, or to be put into the download state uh, for flashing device or so. We also have got uh, uh, hardware for measuring power consumption uh, and yeah, the ability to write fake DID uh, to the device under test over HDMI connection. Uh, we also provide uh, multiple ways of connecting to the uh, device under test uh, via mm, USB, Ethernet, uh, microSD card, of course, or uh, if you need a serial console directly uh, to your uh, device under test, that's also available as well. And uh, we wanted uh, the SD Maxes, uh, sorry, Max Spice, uh, to be uh, able to interact with uh, testing laboratory maintainer. That's why it is equipped not only with uh, activity uh, LEDs, uh, such as uh, SD Reader LED or Power LED, which were suggested by uh, Resin I.O., but also RGB LEDs on the uh, bottom left corner for indicating state of the device, uh, not only MaxPy, but also a device under test, and also OLED display for simple messages. Uh, we also put uh, uh, a couple of buttons uh, to be able to interact uh, quickly with the whole setup. It gave us uh, easy maintenance over the, uh, over the dryad, which we call uh, MaxPy board connected with target device. But we knew that uh, not everything can be predicted uh, before uh, those boards go into production. That's why we uh, decided to be able to extend, uh, to extend them uh, from start. And that's why uh, we uh, use the uh, prototype boards for uh, quick setups uh, if there is uh, a need for a new device or board or just uh, rearrange uh, something uh, quickly. With all that, uh, we've got finally an independent, uh, independent uh, controller for devices under tests, uh, which uh, does not uh, require any test server, uh, which is aware of its state and can indicate any failures or unexpected behaviors, uh, which is also easy to maintain uh, and extensible uh, from the ground up if there is a need to be extended. And if you'd like your own, well, uh, you'll have to uh, equip yourself with a NanoPi Neo for controlling it for about 10 bucks uh, with parts for the MaxPy uh, board. Uh, and the $80 price was for our initial batch, which was about uh, 30 boards, uh, but also some high soldering skills and a lot of patience. Uh, but if you are still interested, uh, go ahead to uh, get Tizen Org uh, to our repository and uh, check the schematics out. Uh, but har hardware is not everything that had to be uh, provided in order to have the uh, automating testing laboratories for embedded devices. We also uh, had to um, implement some accompanying software and with the uh, previous efforts I mentioned, uh, for example, Lava, which is uh, a monolith, we decided that uh, it is hard to extend it uh, in future. So uh, a multi-tier architecture uh, was chosen for the uh, software to control uh, test farm. Uh, we also wanted to follow the Unix philosophy and uh, each tool uh, does only one thing, but we hope that it does it well. Uh, we wanted them to be able to communicate and to be um, easily swapped if there is a need to provide a new tool, so they all communicate over uh, HTTP APIs. Uh, but still, we wanted to have a um, simple and uh, similar um, solution uh, stack and everything is written in Go language. And as I mentioned earlier, how does uh, the testing look like? Uh, that's uh, why we mm, provided four uh, layers 
for uh, testing laboratory. Uh, I mentioned that we uh, have to monitor and download uh, all of the software to be tested. And who knows how to do that? That's the role for Perun. Uh, Perun is a character from Slavic legends. Uh, it's a demigod who has the uh, most power and uh, most responsibilities uh, of uh, all others. Uh, and who knows which uh, actions are necessary. That's the work of Veles. Uh, Veles in Slavic legends uh, is the one who takes care uh, of the um, of the underworld. Uh, as for the um, tasks, uh, how, uh, where can it be done? That's the work for Boruta. Uh, Boruta is a, a caretaker in Slavic legends and uh, uh, takes care of uh, all living creature, creatures in forests. And as for how to actually do that, that's uh, the work on hardware level and uh, actually MoxPy, which does not follow the um, Slavic legends because it was invented uh, independently yeah. much earlier. And let's uh, begin with uh, MoxPy, which uh, actually allows us to create uh, automatic, uh, automatic testing uh, laboratories. It uh, manages single uh, device under tests and is fully aware of its capabilities, whether it has uh, display connected or not, uh, which uh, interfaces does it provide, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, it requires only two interfaces, as I mentioned before, uh, which are power supply and the Ethernet for network connection. Uh, together with uh, device under tests, uh, we call it a dryad, which also is from mm, Slavic legends. As for the software to manage uh, dryads, uh, we provide two tools. Uh, first one, to be able to uh, put operating system images uh, or flash over the air uh, to the devices and also to uh, the other one uh, to control uh, power supply to the target device to, to put the device into known state uh, and be able to control it. And with uh, all those, uh, over all those dryads, we've got a Boruta, which takes care of the whole farm uh, of multiple uh, dryads. It can schedule access requests uh, to the devices, uh, and it provides uh, a convenient way of uh, accessing selected dryads when uh, it is uh, given. Uh, Single Boruta server uh, takes care of uh, multiple dryads, and uh, a single dryad into, uh, mm, hooked up into the Boruta server uh, starts uh, in a maintenance mode, uh, which is then moved to the uh, idle or unallocated by the uh, testing laboratory maintainer. If such dryad uh, matches requirements for the access requests, then Boruta prepares uh, environment for uh, that, uh, set up a tunnel or uh, SSH tunnel or other uh, way of uh, um, connecting to the uh, device under test if it is necessary, and then uh, actions can be performed on the uh, target devices directly. Uh, once they are finished, uh, um, devices go back into the unallocated state and can be reused after that. But uh, I believe uh, no one wants to uh, do that uh, on their own all the time. That's why we also provided uh, a VLS, uh, which is a lightweight testing framework inspired by Lava. Uh, and it provides uh, similar uh, to Lava interface based on YAML job uh, definitions, which we try to stay as close uh, as possible to the uh, Lava syntax. So we uh, also allow uh, the same uh, stages of uh, device under tests, which are deployment, uh, boot, test, and of course, collection of the results. Uh, single uh, VLS server uh, uh, should be connected to the uh, Boruta, and then Boruta, uh, who controls uh, dryads, uh, can uh, execute all those 
uh, tests. And with such setup, we've got uh, it pretty similar to the one that uh, Lava provides. Uh, because uh, from VLS YAML job definitions goes in, uh, then they're all executed uh, right down to the target devices, and the uh, gathered results are brought back uh, by the uh, VLS uh, web interface. And that's actually uh, its main uh, purpose, to automate uh, the actions that are being performed on the device uh, under tests. Uh, and uh, actually, that's all that VLS provides. It only parses the YAML job definition, uh, collects all the assets that are necessary for the job to be uh, completed, uh, requests uh, access to the device under tests uh, from Boruta, and then uh, perform uh, the actual actions. Uh, but I also mentioned that uh, there should be a layer uh, who, mm, or which, uh, actually has to know what should be done. And that's the work for Perun, uh, which is uh, our layer for, uh, or maybe a dashboard would be a better word, uh, for uh, actually testing the operating system images, which uh, schedules the verification uh, on the basis of what is being pre-published uh, for Tyson. Uh, Perun is the layer that actually automates the quality assurance step uh, of uh, what we do at Tizen uh, every day. Uh, so the release engineering duties. Uh, Perun also has to be uh, connected directly uh, to the mm, VLS uh, server. And that's uh, how uh, uh, Perun uh, provides us with uh, results. It crawls a single URL with uh, operating system images reports any change that uh, could be detected, submits VLS jobs on those uh, detected changes, uh, collects uh, artifacts from the uh, test execution, interprets them so that we won't have to, uh, and that's uh, how we know whether a new uh, release can be published or not. And with uh, this layered setup, uh, we think that it's uh, kept pretty simple, but also decoupled. Uh, if you only need software to, uh, and hardware, of course, uh, to unify uh, access uh, to your um, various uh, target devices, then go ahead, just take uh, Mac Spies, connect them to your devices, and uh, with uh, two interfaces, power supply and network connection, you'll have uh, access to them remotely. Uh, if you already have uh, such hardware and uh, you don't want uh, our, then replace it with your own, uh, but maybe you would like to be able to schedule your tasks or schedule uh, remote uh, access requests. Uh, and for that, you might uh, find our uh, Boruta useful. Uh, or maybe you already have your own testing framework uh, and uh, you do not want uh, VLS, but uh, Boruta with uh, MaxPice uh, would be pretty useful. Or maybe uh, you think that our Golang implementation uh, should be uh, reworked and you have already your JavaScript dashboard, your Python-based uh, testing uh, framework and you schedule access to the devices under tests uh, with uh, Java Jenkins. Uh, but maybe the MaxPy would be the uh, hardware you would like to use for the unification uh, of your environment. Uh, that is also possible as long as the communication uh, over HTTP APIs uh, is uh, set with uh, uh, the specification we provided. So that's what we've been working so far. And uh, what about the future? Uh, we will uh, focus on the audio I.O. and testing the uh, audio functions of the single board computers and other uh, embedded devices as well. 
we will investigate the uh, possibility of having USB Type-C as more and more uh, devices are equipped with it uh, and it uh, could be pretty useful. And uh, for the um, better control over the dryads, uh, we uh, also think about having a serial uh, console with uh, um, uh, embedded converter on the board itself. As for the uh, software side, uh, we will uh, provide uh, convenient web interfaces for current players since uh, what we currently have are only CLI tools. Uh, we also want to provide service state management uh, in case there are some uh, failures on the server side and also provide uh, a new layer uh, or even uh, more of them to automate uh, the whole setup further. And uh, if you'd like to know uh, more about uh, those uh, devices, go ahead to our wiki pages uh, or you might also, uh, where you might also find uh, our lessons learned from the uh, SDMAX board. Uh, if you have uh, some questions, uh, go ahead and drop us a line at mailing list or poke us at uh, IRC channel uh, Tizen on Freenode. So to sum it all up, uh, we currently have uh, got a setup uh, which uh, can be uh, quickly made and is uh, pretty easy to uh, maintain. Uh, we finally uh, divided all the responsibilities that are in testing laboratory uh, and uh, no developer has to do it, uh, has to do them uh, all, uh, all by uh, himself. We've got uh, parallel execution of all those uh, tests on target devices uh, and uh, sharing devices for better utilization uh, and a unified environment uh, which we've been uh, pretty happy uh, with so far. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, uh, about uh, this board or software or the laboratory setup, uh, I would be now more than happy uh, to answer them. How many physical devices do you have in this um, system at the moment? All right. Uh, the question is uh, how many uh, devices uh, do we have in our testing laboratory? And uh, currently, I believe it's uh, around uh, 50. Uh, the next batch uh, would add uh, around 100, but uh, we uh, never uh, went with more so far. Uh, the question is uh, about Lava Dispatcher and running it on the MaxPy board. Uh, we haven't tried it, b uh, but it would be possible. Uh, if you uh, ran uh, Debian on the NanoPy board and uh, got uh, Lava Dispatcher packages directly from uh, Lava maintainers, uh, because it's already prepackaged uh, in the repository, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, that would be possible. Uh, we just haven't tried it yet. Uh, we focused on uh, the uh, Boruta Veles Perunstag. How, how much current does it provide to the device in your case? How much? What's the, is there any maximum that you can provide to the mm, As far as uh, I know, there is. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, the question was about the maximum. Uh, power that can be provided to the uh, target device. And uh, as far as I know, uh, there is no uh, limit. Uh, uh, but uh, I believe that uh, it would be uh, much safer to uh, ask that on the mailing list uh, directly to the board designer. Uh, yeah?
Uh, all right. So the question uh, was about uh, making a bigger batch uh, of uh, MaxPy boards and uh, about uh, gathering all interested on the uh, Tizen uh, mailing list. Mm. Tizen is an open source uh, mm, project, so everyone is invited to discuss uh, and to post uh, new information there. So I see uh, nothing that uh, could prevent from it. Uh, all right, the question was about the uh, HDMI uh, on the board and uh, getting image uh, from the HDMI. Uh, currently, only the PCC line is connected for the EDID information. Uh, and uh, it's uh, having the image over the HDMI is a complex topic. Uh, and uh, for now, it's out of our current scope. Sorry. Questions? Okay, thank you, Pablo. Thank you for.